Okay, before Peter joins us, I yesterday I mentioned that uh, it's important to understand why intentional training and uh, is important because unless we take something and do it with intention, it's never going to come into our, you know it's never going to happen, right? Like uh, you know that normal belief is that something you learn or you read, you got to read it seven times or hear it seven times before you really fully embrace what is being taught. So I think we're going to play a short video, about two minutes video, to show why intentional training is important because you need discipline, right? It takes discipline. It takes, in, you know, it's got to be intentional. Unless you really uh, are disciplined in it, you're not going to get what you want in life. God, you know, God is already provided for you through our finished work by Christ. It's there for you to take, but we have to take, we got to make an effort to take possession, right? So nothing is going to be given, it's already given to you, it's in your hands. But you need to understand how to take possession of it, right? And it takes effort. That's why God says it blesses the work of your hands. It doesn't just give it to you. You've got to earn it, and God will bless you, okay? So let me just play that video. Hope that is volume. Sorry guys, just a minute. Sorry about that. Okay, while we are waiting for that, I think we are also going to mention, uh, <coughs> as part of this training, we are also going to launch uh, a, what we call a podcast. Uh, the podcast is really designed to be, it's a 20-minute downloadable audio teaching that we're going to launch from 1st of o March. It's uh, every two weeks we're going to launch it. It's actually prepared by Peter and partnership with KBN, right? So this is going to be available on, on KBN website as well. So, so you need to be a mem subscribe for this as well, right? It's going to be $20 a month. So every two weeks, there'll be one podcast that's available to, for you to download. Now, if you're already a member of KBN, if your business registered, then you already it's available to you free, right? But if you're not a member, you can subscribe just for this because we have membership for business owners and for professionals as well. So if you're not a member, then this is something you can just subscribe to this as a one-off thing, okay? And part, once you download it, you then you can listen to it, and then there is a forum that you can go into and sort of uh, exchange information. If you're not sure, there's a, a forum where you can discuss. Uh, the whole idea is to really... The topic of that podcast is to fast forwarding your success. Okay, it's prepared by Peter and it's going to be a series of about 26 podcasts over a period of one year. All right, so there's a form here if you want to get a bit more information about it and uh, this will be available from 1st March on our website. Okay, I'll just leave it over there at the desk. Thank you. Hmm? No, okay? Okay, while we're waiting for that, I think maybe, Peter, you can just explain what the meaning of source is. Maybe that would probably be a good time. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, <coughs> Listen, guys, a very spiritual answer, and then maybe I will move away. God says he has prepared. Say that he has prepared. Okay, how many of you understand? There are many scriptures saying God has prepared. I has not seen, 
ear has not heard, heart has not believed. God always told hey, Abraham, your descendants have to go and possess a promised land. What is a promised land? Something which God has prepared. God has prepared. So, why God should do that? Because God puts his best. Say that God's best. God's best. See, we know man's best. If you work for a company, you know the company's best. If you go to a church, you will know the church's best. If you want to go to a restaurant, you know the restaurant's best. But God's best. Now, how does God prepare God's best? Few things. Number one, through the promises. Say that promises. So every promise will make God create. Say that create. And recreate. See, David says, you are creating a table in the presence of my competitors. Does it make sense? See, nobody has enemies now, but competitors. Or husband. They are the both same. Husband and... Then you are preparing an anointing for me. It's not anywhere else. It's not in the church. It's in the place where your competitors are. So because you give me that anointing, then everything in my life is going to overflow. See, all these things are created stuff. So God is waiting with these things. The second thing which really runs, our, runs a Christian life is what you hear God speak. We call it prophecy. We call it dreams. We call it visions. We call it edification, encouragement, whatever it is. Revelation. So God reaches out to you and me through his communication. Now somebody asked me, how do I know God's plans? You cannot have a relationship without communication, true or not. God does not entertain SMS. God is not part of your group chat. Sorry. He's not available. So God communicates through his word, promises, prophetic revelation, where he lets people speak into your life. So when people speak, then God shares his plans. God shares his plans. So his plans, his directions about what he has prepared what he has prepared. Finally, God wants to use certain things which he has put within us. Say that within us. Like faith. How many of you understand faith? The Bible says, faith will bring God's rewards. Faith will bring God's Rewards. If you want to buy a house, a property, you can either go and list yourself with the real estate or you can ask God. Have you tried that? We don't want to try that, right? We don't want to. I tried that. God gave me a few houses. Yeah, see, I, mean, I can tell only so much. My son is sitting here, he knows. I just told God. Your word says you will give houses which you never built. Does the word say that? If you can believe that God can give you a house in heaven, why can't you believe that God can give you a house in Melbourne? What comment? See, we refuse to believe. Tata is looking at me. So faith, faith is a tool with which God can work. Holy Spirit is a partner with whom God works. We carry the Holy Spirit. So 
we carry the Holy Spirit to partner with God. So the things which we want, the things which we want, and the things which God wants us to have us, listen to me again. What is the source? The things which we want and the things which God wants us to have. That is the source. Does it make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to you. Simple. I lived in India. God blessed me in certain ways in India. Then God told me to move to New Zealand. God gave me a few properties in New Zealand. Properties are given to me free. Ah, see, this is where. Then you need to ask. You listen to the podcast. <laughs> I mean, see, I can only say so much. Properties have been given to me free. Even in America, properties have been given to me free. Because I'm a blessing to certain people. I never ask. Recently, I was in Indonesia. A man said, he's building a tower. He wants to give me a complex there. I don't go and ask him. I told him, you will have a land and you will have a tower. So he's got a tower now. So he says, you told me you will give me a land. You told me God is going to give me a tower. So I have a land and a tower. I'm giving you a place. Hallelujah. Simple la. No negotiation. <laughs> See, we don't want that kind of thing. Because we want to make some money, 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 money. Count the money, 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 money. Go to 17 banks. Check their interest rate. And go to 27 real estate agents. Check who's... Uh, That's how the world works. Joseph, God gave him the grain of the whole nation. Let me ask you, how many seeds did he put? How much did he work for it? How much water did he irrigate? If you ask Joseph, Joseph will say, my God prepared it for you. If you ask him, when did your God start preparing it? When I was in the great prison. If you ask him why your God put you in prison, he will say, so that I don't mess up his plans. <laughs> yeah, he shut me in so that he finished. <laughs> Hello, how many of you know you can mess it up? See, the scripture is full of things which God has prepared. So your source is what God has prepared. What I want to receive and what God wants to give me. I'm explaining it in a very simple way. So you may ask me, how long should I pray for it? How long should I worship? Up to you. Up to you. Somebody asked me, Peter Kumar, do you fast? I said, sometimes. They asked me, for how many days? I said, till I eat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be jealous, okay? I know you're getting jealous. Please, God has prepared. The Bible says, why can't he give us all things through his son? About two years back, the Lord told me, Peter Kumar, whatever you want to buy, listen, he says, whatever you want to buy, I can give you. So he said, it's up to you. If you want to still go and buy, you can buy. But if you want to come to me, I can still give it to you. He doesn't say, don't go and buy. So all my life, if I want to go and buy, I'm not tapping from a godly source at all. Source. Elijah goes to a widow's house. He carries a source. He says, Mom, you're only looking at the shortage, the decrease. But I can connect you with the source. Three and a half years, there was no rain. But there was an overflow in our house. The problem is, we are taught that it's a miracle and we are taught that the miracle is not for everybody. Hallelujah. And we are also taught 
that for a miracle you need to do a lot of workout. How many of you know after a workout you can still go broke? Any other question? My son is here. Please stand up, son. They should know I have a son. <laughs> he is a business developer. And I told him, help me. He says, no. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Any other question? Okay, can you put the points again, please? Yeah. Please, you can stop me. See, I'm, I've come to serve you. Are you with me? I'm not standing here with a magic wand saying become a rabbit. Oh, sorry, rabbit. No. Stop me. My accent may not be clear. You can stop me. Define the plans God has for you. Any relationship has communication. What is the communication? When your husband goes out, what does he say? Bye, honey. No. He'll say, I won't come back till 8 o'clock. It's a plan. Make some makan for me. That's a plan. Wash my clothes. Well, that's not a good plan. <laughs> but see, there is communication. So you know what the other person is thinking. Yes, ma'am. Can you speak louder, ma'am? They are all watching. Who? What it? Oh, my gift started. Okay. Ah, okay, that's a very good question. So, what gifts are you seeing in me? Nothing. Good. That's a good way. I know it. <laughs> But I'm a very gifted person. Otherwise, your daughter wouldn't have brought you, right? I'll come to that. So define the plans God has for you. Learn to interpret your dreams. See, one of the things, your dreams and visions, what do your dreams and visions? See, I want to put it very simple. Dreams and visions, they birth desire. Say that desire. One more time. One more time. Why do they birth desire? Because God says, I can fulfill your heart's desire. Joseph saw a dream. He immediately understood that he has to sit in a very high place. He tried to share his dream with his brothers. Why did he share that? Because he had a desire. So his brother said, you can't do it. So they dug a pit and they put him in. But the man by then learned to interpret. See, that's where it is, your experience. Say that my experience. One more time. Your experience can either confuse you or it can help you to interpret. People go to the psychics. People go to tarot card readers. Why do they do? They can see and they can say something. But you have to pay, la. You have to pay. God shows. See, today, many of us are so busy in doing our own thing that God cannot intercept our life and show us anything he wants to do in our life. So, the dreams, your visions, they will help you to desire positions and provisions. Positions and provisions. I was sitting there, somebody came and told me I had two dreams. And in both the dreams, God spoke about value. So I immediately told him, check whether you are, your value is going up or going down. So if your value goes up, then you should know what kind of positions God can give you. What kind of positions your company can give you. 
then you will prepare yourself and then you will also define if I sit in that position then this will be this will be my provisions it can be within the company it can be outside the company see I don't have a job and I don't have a businesses I don't have I don't have time but God tells me I wanted to go to 30 countries so then I do some calculation how much do the tickets cost because I still haven't learned how to walk on the water so then I have to exercise faith to receive how many of you understand that I can't wait for money to come how many will money come to you no then you exercise faith you gifts I go to many countries because of my gifts people like the gifts God has put within me so they introduce people they introduce me to people sitting in high places his God speaks to him I've developed that so it's easy for me to receive invitations and I'm going the third thing learn to do faith projections and then monitor your choices to check whether you are growing vertically choices I put a scripture see Joseph goes and tells a guy in the prison cup bearer man when you go to the king tell about me two years the guy forgets hello so if you're a good businessman that's a bad choice what do you say William it's a very bad choice you expect somebody to do something they see please you have to choose the right so many people call me Peter Kumar I got into a partnership the partner is dumping me what do you expect choosing the choices are very very important even great men made lousy choices they made lousy choices we have to be very careful my brother my sister because as a businessman as a marketplace person you are dependent on many other people around you I always say God puts people who could promote you elevate you and bless you if you don't find them then your neighbor will find them hallelujah Indonesia is a nice place a young girl came to me and said Peter Kumar pray for me I said for what she said my boyfriend likes my best friend <laughs> and she cried Indonesian girls they just cry like that so I asked her how did it happen she said I love my boyfriend my best friend wanted to know who my boyfriend is I took her and introduced from that time my boyfriend stopped loving me and he loves my best friend so the moral of the story is even if you love your boyfriend and never take your best friend to meet your boyfriend monitor your choices any questions on this see some of us we don't care I'm sorry that I'm rude there are people who say I'm waiting on the Lord so what do you expect God to do shake a coconut tree and make a coconut fall on your head I'm waiting on the Lord I'm waiting please I mean I, I fully understand this whole podcast is about fast tracking your success fast tracking your success that means if God begins to work in your life what you expect God to do in 20 years God wants to do in two months so if I'm not prepared to make God work in two months to give me what I expect in 20 years I'm a loser because around the world I'm meeting business people Peter Kumar I'm praying all the time I'm going from meeting to meeting I'm listening to Heidi Baker I'm listening to Bill Johnson I'm building I'm listening to Benny Hinn's cousin and we buy all the books I mean I go to Christian houses full of books and I ask them do you read them no time to read 
So why did you buy? No, at that time I thought I should need it. Good intentions. Just good intentions will not make God work in your life. I have to. I have to make God work in my life. This whole podcast is about if God turns up in your business, if God turns up in your workplace, the kind of choices you make. A man called Jacob, he had a prophecy. Da, 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 da. But he saw a girl. He loved the girl so much that he wanted his father not to employ him. That's the most stupidest thing. And the father in law traded the horses, gave him a lousy one. So 14 years he stuck because of a choice. Because of a choice. And he cries to his wife, I thought your father will treat me well, your dad will treat me well. 20 years I've served him and 10 times the man has changed my wages. Why do you let him change? At least you would have given him a punch. You could have quit. You could have done your own thing. See, some of us beg for trouble. How many of you understand why my boss is not firing me? Any questions on this? Yes, ma'am. How does spiritual discernment? Listen, ma'am. Whatever it is, okay, be full of the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues, see dreams, visions. If God does not transfer his plans into your life, you have to have a transfer of God's plans. What does it mean? May God tell you what he wants to do. May God tell you what he's about to do. Yes, Peter. Loudly, loudly. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. You are still in the world, so you are not escaping worldly principles. Two people contending for a position. Do you defend your position or give it away? Kingdom. Yeah, same. same. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. See, David wants to go and fight with Goliath. What does brother say? Do you remember? Don't go. So who was supposed to go and fight? David or his brother? David? His brother is serving Saul's army. The brother has been recruited to go fight against a giant. The man is trained. But if he refuses to go, David must have screamed, Bro, this is your time. This is your opportunity. This is a goose which is going to go you lay a golden egg. You'll be promoted. But the brother says, I don't care. So David says, because you don't want to go, let me go. But it aligns with the prophecy. See, the prophecy is you have to vertically rise up. So when you, this is where it is. When you take a choice, when you make a decision, it should be governed by the word of God. It should be governed by your preparation in your prayer, in your devotion. It should not be governed by your lottery. I always say this. I love to say this. I love Chinese food. I'll tell you why. The first time I went to a Chinese restaurant in the U.S., in the U.S. Chinese restaurants, they're very polite. I don't see that in Australia. They give you the food and they give you the bill. In Australia, you take the bill, you pay, and you walk away. But in the U.S., while you put your credit card on a tray, they take it in a tray, right? They bring fruit. How many of you know that? Orange and watermelon, normally. And then they bring a fortune cookie. Have you heard of fortune cookie? 
Now I didn't know that. So the lady said, it's a lucky cookie, lucky cookie, lucky cookie. I said, I'm a pastor, I don't want luck. She said, no, everybody needs luck. So I didn't know what to say. So she took the cookie, she broke the, on the, the cover, wrapper, she pulled it out, broke it, and she took a slip of paper, and she said, lead, 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 lead. I mean, read in Chinese. So I read it, and it said, you're the most beautiful woman in the whole world. <laughs> I love the Chinese. She's Chinese. Connect, connect with the plans of God, purpose of God. Take time. Take time. If you're a kingdom person, listen, say, I'm a kingdom person. One more time. One more time. Because I have learned to find out the plans of God. Yesterday I said my starting statement was, if you don't know the plans of God, you will live either in your plans or the plans other people make for you. Yeah, your job. Who designed your job? Your mother-in-law? Every website, today online, offline, sideline, no line, it's all designed by man. So we pray to God and we are so eager to rush and connect with the plans of God. Once we are stuck with the plans of God, then we tell God, I have no time to pray, no time to read the word, and then we expect God to understand. He won't care. He'll say, okay, take your own time. And then for many of us, God is a distress alarm. Hallelujah. But if I learned to make God tell me, I'm going to take you further. See, this faith projections. I've tried to do something. Can you put it up? Gibson, I think you need... I've just... I've just I mean, it's just a projection. It's a format I present to people. It, it can be used by anybody. I mean, it's not exactly too professional, but I recommend this because in my house, I'm trying to make my wife follow this. Understanding faith projection. Faith, I'm going to put it down. Faith equals reward. Say that rewards. Faith is not just a feeling. Faith equals. So, more faith Say that more faith, more rewards. One more time. More faith, more rewards. No rewards. How many of you can handle that? Today I meet so many people who say, but Peter Kumar, nothing is happening, but I still have faith. What do you call that faith? Yeah, I call it a dying faith. <laughs> See, the currency of the kingdom is not a dollar, it's faith. Your faith connects with the Holy Spirit. The faith connects with the Holy Spirit and it completes the transactions. Can you put the next one, sir? So God promises he will bless everything we do. He will fill our lives with miracles. He will help us to receive through giving. How many of you understand that? See, today many of us, we give, give, give without, without knowing how to receive. <laughs> Some of us are great givers. We give to church, we give to ministry, we give to so many NGOs without any receiving. So how long can I give without receiving anybody? See, this is why many of you cannot give. Even I cannot give because I don't receive. This is a promise. Give and it shall be. He will make our seeds produce a harvest 30, 60 and I'm working on a school. I want to bring the school with KBN. 
I want all of us, say that all of us, to understand that our resources can multiply 30, 60, 100. Imagine if our church is full of people who go in this multiplication. Tell me who won't like to come to church. Did you hear me? In a church, everybody's finances multiplies. Tell me which Aussie will not like to go to that church. Tell your pastor, the Indian man said that. The next one, sir. <coughs> Identify growth factors. Opportunities within the framework. Many of us are stuck in a job. I tell them, you take a job and look for opportunities. You start a business. You say, this is my business. No. In from that platform, look for the opportunities. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. So the more opportunities you look, then God will show you opportunities around you. Around you. Around you. A lady, she lives in, she lives in uh, Sydney. I went to pray for her. She made a particular cake. I like the cake very much and I told her, I see food coming out of your hand. I mean, that's a, that's a vision. She said, I love to cook. So I said, why don't you start cooking? So she started going to birthday parties. Today she's got a franchise. She's got a franchise. That's all God promised. God said, I will bring people to your doorstep who will learn to work with you. She smiled and said, I'm just a housewife. See, the prophecy, it didn't say you have to bake cakes and no. Nah. Look for opportunities. The moment she discovered there's an opportunity, she started working on it and then God begins to work. Recognizing people appointed to bless us. Say that appointed to bless us. So you can have a job, you can have a business, but if you are recognized people who are appointed to bless you, they can give you houses, they can give you cars, they can give you, you can still have your job, you can still have your business, you can still have your ministry, and you can increase the number of people who are appointed to bless you. How many of you like what I'm talking? I'm telling God, give me 50 people whom you have appointed to bless me. Is it wrong? Does it make sense? If you pray like that, you think God won't show you? I like this dead silence. See, that's what Joseph did. That's what David did. David asked for fighting men. Gideon. The people who were appointed to work with him, they stood with him on the mandate and they turned the whole economy. Connecting with those providing prophetic insight to grow and multiply. Connect with them. Connect with them. Prepare a faith budget to grow and multiply. Faith budget, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Can you put the next one, sir? Project faith receiving, receiving. I'm talking about receiving, not giving at all. Miracles, healing, unusual partnerships, unusual promotions, financial multiplication, recovery of losses, debt cancellation. This should be our lifestyle. This should be our lifestyle. So if you ask Jesus, why do you let me get into debt? He will say, so that somebody can come and cancel it. <laughs> See, please, hello. But that's why I work. We cannot be perfect all the time. How many of you understand? We cannot be perfect. But a loss cannot be an end. A loss has to be a new blessing. So faith investment, I've put 
faith investment, first fruit, offering, tithe, prophetic seeds, seeds to avoid deserted, seed to turn losses. Even if your income is $50, you have to take some seeds. Many of us, we give as if we throw money into a river. Yesterday, I asked a question. As a businessman, if you put $100 into a business, you want that $100 to produce a profit, a multiplication of $1,000. But you go to a church or you write a check for a ministry, you don't care what will happen to that money. Why? I ask a lot of people, so you're giving money. What do you expect? What do you expect? Many people think church needs our money. When you go to McDonald's, do they need your money? We think church is a pot which needs your charity. No. Church is a place where whatever you give will open the windows of heaven. I don't have much time. I told, I told uh, Matthew, next time, if you guys like, maybe one day I can do a teaching entirely on biblical finances. My children know that our house runs by biblical mandates. I had to teach my wife. It took many years. Yeah, even now my wife says, I don't understand. I tell her, you don't understand, but just do it. Prepare a faith budget to receive multiplication. See, the normal income is there. You project the increase 30 times. You can put a projected increase of your normal income, the normal things. So if you put a projection, say there a projection, can you run a company without projection? True or not? So how does a company do the projection? Anybody? How does a company do a projection? Already happening. So the present status. Anybody else? What you aim is a projection. Very good. So what decides what you aim for? God? Tuhan? Okay. She's very spiritual. Okay. Good. What decides a projection, sir? Yeah, that's what he said. What else? I'll tell you, past performance. True or not? Last year you make a profit of 3%. This year you would like to make a profit of 4.5%. So if God wants to bless you 100 times, you lose 90. Correct. You're a loser. Normally, our faith projections, our projections run by past experience, present situation. The third thing, competitor. How many of you understand? So we are eager to receive what somebody else receives. If you have a job, you are eager to receive what somebody else receives. You are happy when you receive what somebody else I mean, that's commonality. Pension. We are eager to receive what somebody else receives. How am I different? So if you make a projection, then you do an annual increase. Monitor this. Monitor this. Monitor this. I'm giving this to people whom I mentor, and they hate it. I don't know. Christians. But if your company gives a form, till 12 o'clock you want to sit and write it. Is there anything? So, to be monitored every month, your normal monthly income, projected monthly income, income received. If you make a projection, I will tell you, three, four months, nothing will happen. You'll be very discouraged. But after that, it will happen. My personal finances, I can testify. I can testify I'm not very rich. But I know what comes in. I told the Lord, learn 
teach me how to make it multiply faith prayer fasting sowing reaping our personal finances my personal i am not talking ministry finances lord personal finances has grown more than 60 times if you check with my wife my all my wife always says i know what came in and i know what i'm spending hallelujah i'm talking about what i am experiencing if it can happen in my life because my money is multiplying i can book tickets for the next 6 months easily i can ask god for certain provisions any questions faith projection have a budget to receive if you have a budget to receive that will restructure your prayer life don't look at me i'm telling you the truth <laughs> it will restructure your prayer life it will restructure your faith it will restructure your fasting it will restructure your sowing and then it will bring the whole harvest of material blessings it doesn't matter whether you have a great job or not it doesn't matter whether your business goes well or not god does not depend on your job to bless you god does not depend on your business yes god will work in your business and god will make it happen but god will use your faith god will use your understanding of revelation and god will use you madam asked a question my gifts after i became a christian i started reading the book of acts the book of acts at least about 400 or 500 times i'm talking about 1981 to 86 i would carry my bible wherever i go even if i get 5 minutes i will sit and read the book of acts i was fascinated by the way people were able to heal people raise the dead cast out demons and i put my hands on every page in the book of acts and i told jesus i'm willing to do everything which these guys did and then i spent a lot of time studying first corinthians 12 13 and 14 i was very fascinated by this guy paul when he said you know i i speak the language of angels i mean casually he saying see nobody even thought nobody teaches these things to us nobody but i speak to angels i speak to demons i told the lord open my eyes i want to see i want to speak to them i want to listen to them he says if i know all the mysteries and nothing is hidden from me jesus says i know everything So here is a man who walked with Jesus. Maybe he asked Jesus, "I want to be like you. I want to know everything." The Bible says God will not do anything without revealing it to his. So the desire, man, the desire, the desire. So after I desired, I studied. Then I told some of my friends, "I want to prophesy over you." They laughed at me. But I told them I told them I started speaking and I saw tears in their eyes tears my children they were growing up my daughter when she was about 6 7 years old every meeting I pray for people she will walk with a box of tissues and she will go on giving tissues because people will cry if somebody doesn't cry she'll say please cry take my tissue So you need to learn you need to desire you need to practice so now my goal see so i set goals i want to prophesy over three people in a month and i used to check is it encouraging is it edifying should i should i should i train myself more i took a goal i want to heal three people in a month i want to cast out demons i want to break bondages over three people so while i'm doing my own thing 
I took time to do these things. So today I'm basically going around the world only because of my gifts. I'm not a great Bible teacher. I've never been to a Bible school. I speak from my revelation. Paul says, eagerly desire. Eagerly desire. I want to close, my brother, my sister. Any questions? Yes, sir. Where is the Lord? So why is he sitting there? Mm, why is he sitting there inside you? See, please, God chooses to be with us only to tell you what he wants to do. Have you ever asked God, why do you want to sit in me? See, Hindus, they don't expect God to come and sit with them. Hindus say God is everywhere. Universal God. It's like Wi-Fi. If I want, I'll connect. Hello, please. Not connected. That's not God. That's why he chooses to be with you. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is in you, with you. So take time. I always talk to God. See, I didn't know these things. The church never taught. See, our problem is we want the church to teach us. And we purposely choose a church which doesn't teach us these things. Hallelujah. Bad choice. And then we blame the pastor. He doesn't teach, he doesn't teach, he doesn't teach. No. Why should anybody tell you? You ask questions. You ask the Lord. God spoke to Adam. God spoke to Eve. God spoke to the serpent. I told the Lord, if you can spend time talking to the serpent, I'm not lesser than the serpent. Talk to me. That's how I started. Be a little rebellious like me. I was rebellious. My son was more rebellious than me. So spend time. Find out. I would always say, find out, find out, find out. That's the only answer. The scriptures are full of models. People were able to do that. If somebody was able to do that, I should be able to do that. Good question. Yes, ma'am. Loud, louder. What do, you think the, what do you think the relationship between the, uh, the faith and the expectation? So, does it mean like people say you can't use your faith to twist God's arm, right? So, but for example, if I believe God in something, should I like say, okay, I'll faith in God to believe in something and then I expect good things to happen. But is that, does that make sense? If your dad is your millionaire, how much can he give you? If your dad is a millionaire, how much can he give you? <laughs> you girl, I tell you. If your dad is a millionaire, how much can he give you? A million dollars. So if you ask for ten dollars and then you ask for fifty dollars, will your dad get upset? Will it make a big difference for your dad between ten and fifty dollars? See, you don't. Please listen, please. Nobody can twist God's arms. No, you cannot manipulate him. He is full of love, and he all he always says, "I mean, whatever I have, I can give it to you." But you should know what he can give you. This is the problem. This is the problem. Forgive me. I prophesied over a lady in the US. There's a new beginning in your life. She screamed and said, now I can dump my husband and go after my boyfriend. <laughs> in the church. I said, lady, I didn't mean that. She said, no, I was asking God to speak to me. And the husband was sitting there. Boyfriend was sitting there. Husband called me false prophet. Boyfriend called me accurate. I told the lady, no, God doesn't speak like that. <laughs> you should know what God has. That's where the promises of God. Final question, anybody? 
यस मैम एक्साइटेड बिकॉज गॉड वर्क विद यू राइट सी प्लीज यू कैन नॉट यू कैन नॉट वॉक इन गॉड्स प्लान ऑन योर ओन योर किड राइट आई वॉज वॉचिंग योर किड योर किड वॉज रनिंग अराउंड बट इफ योर किड वॉन्ट्स टू गो आउट you he will come to you you will take hold and lead him so without your help certain things your kid cannot do right does your kid know that knows so the more you go to him the more he takes your hand and he leads you into the plans he has when god is with you you will never walk alone are you happy so even in a business even in a job people may put you down but he doesn't stop working with you joseph was in the pit god was with him in the pit joseph was in the prison god was with him in the prison why to take him to the palace somebody yes yes sir listen guys listen 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 okay let me take some time when you take a job what is your definition of a job anybody my definition is a job is something which somebody teaches you to do and you just do it all their life to please them am i wrong they tell you sit there you sit there they tell you come at 8 o'clock and sit there you are there at 7:45 they tell you this is your microwave and you go to the microwave every day why don't you go to the next microwave they throw you out what is a business a business is something which you imitate what other people are doing so we watch somebody doing it and we think it's good and we do it nothing wrong please nothing wrong but most of the world goes like that so what happens when you are so consumed by a job or a business you don't pay too much attention to your faith to work you don't pay too much attention for your talents to work you give a lot of attention to your experience and your skill how many of you know your skill will not give you any multiplication but your talents will give you so when you are led by the spirit say that led by the spirit and led by the promises your job or your business will just be one channel say that one channel but when you are walking in that channel god will bring people whom he is appointed to bless you and elevate you so they will not stop you from doing what you are doing while you are doing what you are doing they will also give you other opportunities simple i know a guy who has got a factory a metal factory the factory went on strike he came to me and he said they've shut my factory the government came and sealed it my heart broke so i asked him can you do something do you do something he said nothing much nothing much nothing much he's a businessman so i went to bed and i got a call from a lady from another country they are looking for tons of salt 
So I casually told him, man, a lady called, she's looking for tons of salt. He said, actually, I'm doing salt. I said, but yesterday I asked you, you said nothing much. He said, no, 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 I never thought salt was my main business. See, Jesus said, knock and it shall be open. Jesus did not say, I will open exactly the same door you knock. Did he say that? See, we keep on knocking at one door till it breaks. So we don't ignore so many other doors which God has opened. So does it mean I should stop what I'm doing? No. But while you're doing something simple, Jesus was in Peter's boat. Peter said, I'm used to working on this. Jesus said, why don't you try that? What happens? He's used to working in a particular way. He can explain. My grandfather's grandfather started working here. So Jesus asked, so what did he get? Nothing. But I will still work. Hello? How many of you understand that? Even though I get nothing, I will still? What do you think Jesus will say? He'll say, you're a stupid idiot, man. Why don't you try this side? Make this work. And then maybe this will also work. Take. So what I'm trying to say, don't be fixated. Don't be fixated. I started talking to young people. Sunday school. Played a little bit of guitar. All the girls loved me because I played the guitar. Those days, that's how it was. But people told me, you speak so well to children, become a child evangelist, become a youth pastor, become a guitarist. And I was thinking, 65 years, I'm playing the guitar and talking to kids. They'll throw me out. <laughs> so I said, I don't want to settle like that. Then God said, nations. Even now I can talk to kids. I can play a little bit of guitar. I can sing. But I'm going to nations. So it is birthed from where I started. It has not deviated, but it is birthed. That is where faith, projection, will take you. Last question, anybody? I'm sorry, maybe I cannot do justice, but we don't have all the time. Yes, Peter. Louder, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I prayed for a guy. I told him God's going to give you a business. He found a beautiful business and he put all his money. A liquor bar, hallelujah. I told him wrong. He said, you prophesied. I said, this will not please God. He said, I don't care. So all opportunities may not be godly opportunities. <laughs> no, you are a man of God. Choose where God can work. <laughs> that, that you have to decide. You cannot choose whatever you want as a man of God. Okay. Okay. Very good. But this is where the promises and the prophecy matters. Listen, when I started my Christian walk, God told me I'm going to take you to many nations. So from that time, see, I worked for 16 years. Are you with me? 16 years I was working in the corporate world. But I had to be careful that my job will not stop me from doing what God has called me to do. So I started traveling. Even in India, every Friday night I will go out. I'll take my wife. Sometimes we travel together. Monday morning we come back. So I had the ability, then every holiday, so then God saw my faithfulness in small things. 
So one day God told me, resign, I'm going to take you to many nations. I resigned. People laughed at me. They said, no, without an income, how will you go? But God said, I'll provide. So from that time, God took over. So you have to make choices. Make a choice so that it does not stop your call. It doesn't stop your anointing. It doesn't stop your ministry efforts. It doesn't stop your growth. It does not stop your kingdom provisions. Are you with me? Right. Guys, let's close. I, I want to share only one thing. This is called task one million. I have given it to Gibson. My mandate, see I'm not an Aussie, I'm a Kiwi living in America. But God has put six countries in my heart. It happened in Australia, it actually happened in Melbourne. About two years back, God woke me at about four o'clock and he told me, can you do something to get a million Australians know me in a personal way? I told God I'm not an Australian. He told me, but I don't want Australians to go to hell. Yesterday I spoke. You have a prophecy over your nation. The land of the Holy Spirit. The great Southland. God told me, can you do something? So this is there. If millions of Australians need to be reached, thousands of Australians need to be trained. Train to reach millions. Train to reach millions. So I committed to the Lord that I will visit your country at least six times a year. Do I come often, Nick? I come. I come. I stand in this hall. I'm crying to so many pastors. Can we do something? My expertise is to train people to reach others to plant churches, to multiply. But I don't have greater opportunities. Pastors, maybe they know me, maybe they don't know me. But yesterday I challenged. I want to come to your nation another five more times. Every time I come, I visit all your key cities, most of your key cities. I'm here in Melbourne, I'm going to Canberra, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Darwin only for this purpose. So I, if you want, if you want to be trained in some way to stop an Australian from going to hell, it's your responsibility. And if you say, Peter Kumar, we want to support you, there's an Australian account, a tax exemption, somebody has given. So you can sow whatever you sow there will help me to buy my tickets when I come here. So you can talk to Gibson, but that's what we are trying to do, even through KBN. This is not a priority. A conference is not a priority. You are a priority. You are the mandate. What you and God can do in this nation can stop somebody from having eternity without God. Try it. Make it happen. So I'm going to give the meeting to Matthew. You can check with Gibson anytime if you want. I mentor a lot of people. Go into my website to see what we can do. But um, I think we have time till 10.30, right? I will be here. If anybody needs prayers, I will serve you. I've come to serve you. At, uh, but one more thing. If anybody sitting here, if you say, I don't know Jesus in a personal way. Jesus is not a religious symbol. He's your bridge into the heart of God and your eternity with God. You can tell Jesus tonight, I didn't know you so well, but I don't want to be ignorant. I want to connect with you. It's a good choice. God bless you. Thank you. Did you all enjoy this? Benefited? Good. That's good. So I think what we're going to do is before we, uh, brother, can pray for each of you, uh, I just want to summarize 
uh, what he was speaking about the last part. We are very serious about what uh, the Lord has put into his heart to one million souls for the, Lord, for, for the Lord in Australia. And we're going to start this training sometime in April. We haven't fixed the date yet. We're going to de determine the date and we'll an announce it so very soon. It'll be a, a one day training, one full day training, probably a Saturday, right? So it's not like a very two, three days. It's just one Saturday, come in the morning, be trained, equipped, go out, and then we'll have another one maybe every two months so that you start growing. Y you know, you become the salt and the light and you become where God wants you to be, right? And when you start walking that faithfully, you'll see the blessings will flo follow you as well, right? You don't have to run after the blessing. The blessing will follow you, right? So that's a key thing. That key, I think if whatever we learn today, end of the day, the, the, our purpose on earth is to bring souls, right? But in order to do that, as he said, heaven, we don't need money. Here we need money, right? So we need us to be blessed by the Lord so that we can give, right? It is not about us giving from out of nothing. God will give us sufficient, more than abundantly through which we can bless, so we can receive more, right? That's a key thing. So we don't have to be stressed about it, right? We just walk in faith, and as you saw some of the formulas there, we are happy to send copies of the PowerPoint if you want it. At least you can apply the formula and you can start practicing. As he says, it's not going to happen overnight, but you will see three, four months downstream, you will start happening because your, your faith is rising. As your faith rising, as your expectation rises, it will start happening. Right, because on earth is all about faith. Okay, so that's a key thing. Now, yesterday I mentioned to you guys, some one of you, a few of you, I said, the, remember, right? If you do not impact the things around you, right, things around you will impact you. Right. So the whole message today is about that. You have to do something about it to start th making things happen for you. Right, and it's in your hands. God has put everything you need in your hand. It's not about money. Right? If you look at the lady with the jar of oil, she had only the last few drops before she said, I was going to make my last cake and I'm going to perish. But Elijah came and said, no, you go and collect the jars because what you are, he asked her, what you have in your hands? She said, oil. Right? So it's the same principle that applies to us as well. It's we already have what God wants to bless us with. You just have to look. And that looking is not by just looking down, but you've got to look up. That means spending time with the Lord, right? It's a discipline that you need to develop. As I said yesterday, we were talking about one of the most successful Christian entrepreneurs in Australia, named by the brother by the name of Dave, right? He came with nothing into this country, with $38,000 debt, right? Today, he's running an organization which is close to a billion dollars. You know what he does? Every morning, 4 o'clock, he gets up, he goes into the bush, he prays for an hour. Just prays out the Bible, waits on the Lord. Once a week, every Wednesday, he spends the whole day. He doesn't even work. He just takes time out one day, he waits on the Lord. So the Lord starts speaking. He talks about faithfulness. He wants us to be disciplined. When he sees we are disciplined, he will come and start fellowshipping with us. It's not today, I'll do 10 minutes, tomorrow, half a day, I forgot about it for the next three days. No. God wants us to be disciplined. Right? So that's what is the key to it, is if you want the Lord to speak to you, you need to build that habit. Okay, so it's not a it's not a miracle. You don't need a miracle. You don't have to run after pastors or evangelists. It's in your hands, right? Take home that message. That's the most important message that I can give you today. It's in your hands. It's in your it's in your uh, ability to make it happen, right? God has given it to you. God is waiting to bless you with what that that assignment that or the maximum potential that's put into your heart, into your life. All right, start tapping on it. Start reaching out, start bl being blessed. Okay? I won't talk about the video. If you want to see the video, because we're running out of time, you can go to our website, nehemiahconsulting.com.au. The video is there. You can have a look at it. All right? It talks to you about intentional training, why you need intentional training as well. Okay? So that's also the video. As I said, then the podcast is coming up in March. So if you all are looking interested, uh, we have already got 14 uh, podcasts ready to go. We've got another 10 more to uh, come up in the next couple of months. So it is going to be something that is follow through from what we have, we have taught you today. You'll be a great blessing for you as well. Okay? So thank you. And today, now, if you, can, if you want any prayers, i just pass it over to Peter. Huh? Yeah, 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 we'll do that. Okay, let's say pray first. And uh, we'll, okay, I'll just start close with a closing prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Father God, as we come before you this evening, once again, we thank you, Lord, for your presence here. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Peter here. Thank you for teaching us and impacting into us, Lord, because it is your desire. It's your desire, Lord, to see us bring up and dip our max the potential that you put in our lives, to live out the life that you've given us, that you want us to be. So we thank you for Peter to be able to open even that revelation into our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, now it's in our hands. He has spoken what you have put into his heart, and now it is in our hands to take this and do what we need to do. So the choice is in us whether we want to take this and run with it, or we just ignore it and carry on with our lives as it is. So Lord, I just pray today for each and every one of us who are gathered here today, that truly, Lord, truly we'll be convicted today and we'll really, truly want to be where you want us to be. To glorify you, Lord, because when we are performing at the maximum potential that it glorifies you. And you'll take you to the next level because you said we need to start with our little faith. You need to see us walking in the faith. And when you see that Faithfulness, you'll give us more responsibilities. You'll open more opportunities in our lives. Lord, I just pray today that each one of us today, in, in six months' time, Lord, or by end of this year, we will come back here and, Lord, we'll say thank you, Lord, for what you've done in our lives. We said, and you will be pleased because each one of us will be able to give glory to you because we have seen a transformation in our lives. Our lives have been changed. And not only our lives, but we have changed our, the lives of those around us. For your glory, Lord. For your glory, Lord. Lord, today we start planning for the one million souls from here. So, Lord, we just pray and commit the date that we're going to have in, on April. And, Lord, we pray for those who will be of your calling. As I said, many are called, a few are chosen. So, Lord, I pray that those who are chosen will be here. Because when you called us by name to be your children, you called us for a purpose. Not to be living our lives, but to to glorify you, Lord. So today I just thank you once again for this opportunity. For everyone who are here gathered here, I bless them in the name of Jesus. Bless the work of the hands. Bless their coming in. Bless their going out. Bless their families. Lord, bless their finances. And Lord, we thank you once again for this evening. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <coughs> thank you, Matthew. Thank you. I mean, were you blessed in any way with Revelation? Think about it. See, if it works in my life, after all, an Indian man, <laughs> it will work. So, once again, see, if anybody wants to sow a seed, if God puts it in your heart, you can give it to Matthew or go into our website, give for Australia. I want to come. I, I'm, I'm coming back in April. This is how God opens. Anytime God opens, I'm willing to come. But... Um, we have half an hour, I and mean, I know how to do it. You tell God, this man doesn't know me. I'm not running after a prophet or a prophecy. But if you can say something in my life, one word from God can change our life. So I'm going to call some people up. I would like to serve all of you. Uh, so come here, sir. Come here. You guys come. Come here, sir. You. The next one, sir. Thank you. Uh, William, please come. Come here, sir. Come here. The man there. Nick, did you, was it okay? There's yeah, it's just the beginning. I mean, I have some more formats, but yeah. Uh, come here, Peter. Would you like to come, sir? Um, those two, Rose and uh, the sister sitting there, the man there, and uh, Robert, please come. And uh, ma'am, would you like to come? Thank you. Come here, sir. Um, Peter and uh, Joan, thank you. And the man there. Yes, sir, please come. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Um, Latha, come here. I, I will pray for all of you, so don't, don't be anxious. I don't want to be anxious. Come here, David. Thank you. Um, give me a... <coughs> 
Today you've been talking to God. Even when you were sitting here, you were telling God, talk to me very clearly. You come out of brokenness. You shed a lot of tears. Even in this nation, many people have violated your simplicity. They took you for granted. You wanted somebody to protect you. It has begun. You don't want to run after money. There are times you said, I'm not running after money. But today you say, we need to do ministry. You will have a joint venture. Your husband will not paint all his life. I'm going to give him something totally different. I'm going to give you a larger house. I'll give you one more child. You will work for a while. You will do a lot of ministry. You will travel to nations. But I will give you a business. A product will come. You will not invest anything. Your whole life will change. Lord, honor her desires. Her desires are so simple. Honor her. You don't know what to do. You're a good, you, you initiate a lot of things. People come to you for ideas and then you get stuck. You're not growing in your workplace. You want to quit, quit. I'm going to give you something totally different. You like to travel, I will take you to America. You will do things in another country. But forget the past. You're carrying on a lot of hurts. Forget. Even today you said, I will not run after God for money. Money will come to you. You will teach people. You're a true friend. You're a man of honor. I will bless you. Many times you say, I know things are changing, but I want to be strong. You did not know God. Now you know a little bit. But you're asking this question, should I give up certain things to follow Jesus? You don't need to give up. I will touch your parents. I will make you live in this country. I will establish you. Don't look at your past failures. I don't see your failures. Certain things got messed up. But I'm calling you again. Finish what's in your hands. I'm giving you a future. You are a financial model. You teach finances to many people. But the last three, four days, you've been asking God, speak specifically about ventures, about partnerships, about certain setbacks, and also how to move forward. I will give you more properties. You will develop a financial system. You will not run this business. This will change. Your staff will change. I'll give you a bigger office. You will have connections all across Australia. You will have connections in China. You will set up a financial system. People will come. It's not exactly a bank, but it's like a micro bank. People will trust you. They will give you large amounts of money and resources, documents, because you're trustworthy. I'm going to give you. You're asking, did I do a mistake? No, it's not a mistake. I will go past you and I'm going to bless you. I'm opening two nations for you immediately. Don't depend on people. There are people who are taking advantage of your life. Don't depend on them, let them go. But I'm bringing new people, I'm bringing a new structure and certain governments will call you, governments. They will put money in your product. I will stand with you, I will bless you. Don't make any change in your life. For the last two months, you're looking for a big change. You want to make money. You want to help the poor people. You have a heart for many non-Christians, even Muslims. But I will make you a businessman. I will make you a venture capitalist. You will have designs. You will go into the fashion industry. I'm going to bless you. You will be a testimony. You will be on media. Every day you say, Lord, I'm nothing. Yes, I will raise you up from dust. I know what happened to you. I know how people used you, how they walked over you. You cried. I will be with you. Nobody can touch you. You will become. Certain doors shut. Don't, don't regret. I'm opening a greater opportunity. Certain business proposals fell. Don't get upset. You will be a businessman. Relationships, you're trying to rework on that. 
don't work, don't, don't, just wait. It will come to you. Because you are sincere, I will make it happen. Can you send this? You are praying too much, love. please come. <laughs> Where is your husband? <laughs> I like this Indonesian language. Go forward. Don't go backwards. There have been certain setbacks in the family, but I am honoring you. You are a worshipper. You don't, you don't say you're a businessman, but you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to start something new. Now certain proposals are there. One month, wait one month. I will show you what exactly to do. Your money will multiply, your money will grow. No more losses. You will be loved by the family. I'm turning things. I'm your healer. Doctors said many things, but I'm turning it around. I'm going to bless you. You hear God. God has spoken to you many times. You know it is God. Right from childhood, you long for the Father's love. And you're like a father to many people. You like to defend people. You like to stand with poor people, the weak. But today you're saying, I don't know who I am. I don't know whether I'm meant to be a businessman. It is not a business. It is a huge thing but you will be a social person. You will minister to secular people. You are fed up of the church. But I've called you to be an apostle in the marketplace. Money will come to you. People will invest in your life. Stay in this country, don't run away. I need you, says the Lord. I'm giving you two new businesses without any investment, but all of them will be related to communication. You will have your own studio a digital stuff. It will come from a non-Christian man. Be secular. Don't be too sacred. Because the church will shut you down. They will choke you to death. The product I've given you is global. It's not churchy. But the church will run after you. Not now. So go to people who are producers. I will help you to step into the Middle East, into India, into Africa and South America, it will happen very soon. I'm going to bless you. No retirement for you. I'm changing things. I'm standing with you. There are people who say things, you listen. You're not afraid, but you're saying it's not for you. It is for you. You will begin to travel all across Asia. You will go as a consultant. You will work with poor people but you will also be part of a huge organization, a network. You gave up a lot of things, thinking it's over, it's going to begin. I'm going to make it happen. I love you, man. Can you come, sir? You, yes. And can you guys come? <coughs> there are three things in your heart. Are we doing the right thing? Yes. Where are we supposed to do it? Will we do it in Australia? It will happen in Australia. Another organization will stand with you. The government will help you. You will put structures. The third, finances will come. Government will stand with you. Certain governments, certain governments. I'm bringing you to unusual favor. You, you will create more structures. You will come up with certain solutions not just housing programs. You will go into hospitals, schools, and you will set up so many other things. But there will come a time, you will develop a product which is going to be so unique, it will change many people's thinking. You already have an idea. It is a combination. It is not just one product, but it's a combination. Work on it. I'm going to make changes. Come here, sir. You're very creative. You don't want to do what others are doing. But many setbacks. It began in the family, then it hit your health, your ability, studies, everything. You're challenged. But you believe in God. Why? Because your dad believes. But tonight you told God, talk to me. Many mistakes people did for you. They did not treat you well, but you forgave them. 
you will travel to many countries you will speak you will be a motivational speaker many times you say maybe i will never have a job why do you say that i will take you i will carry you people abandoned you i will not abandon you i will love you says the lord amen you have a prophetic gift there are a few things in your heart you are crying for this nation revival it will happen you will be part of it i am giving you the house an inheritance people try to take it away but it will come back people buy tickets for you you will travel i will take you to jerusalem i will take you there i will honor you others if you need prayers if you can come forward i want to pray you are trying to make big changes in your life for the last 4 years you are seeing that your life is stagnant relationship marriage finances but for the last 3 months you you've taken a kind of a pause nobody knows that because you're doing many things but you are asking yourself what am i supposed to do because all your plans they took you to a place and you're not able to, you're not able to move further live in this country you will start something totally new you have a heart for women i'm bringing a product without any investment you will talk you say i don't want to be a sales person i don't want to be a marketing person no they will come to you they will bless you with finances whatever you lost i will give back many times you say my children should not walk through the path i went no it's changed you will be a blessing no more tears i'm giving you a new job it's not a job job we will work for a while you will make more money but you will also work with her doing certain things prepare yourself it's not about money it's about dignity it's about standing up you stood for certain principles people try to walk over you stand up nobody can touch you thank you lord you are a man of god you are a man of prayer in many ways you are a pastoral but certain things happened you won't say it affected you but it has slowed you down and now you don't know whether you can pick up your pace wait for a while another 3 months you will heal you will have money you will work with two other people your whole life will change finish what is before you studies then you will have a job you will have a skill forgive your parents i will stand with you many things happened certain things you don't like but you are saying it's okay i'm moving on i will take you to nations you love to go to the us i will take you there you will also serve in certain nations which you have never been before sometimes you feel like running away from your house don't do that stay i will honor you peter you have a call you have a ministry you will rise up in this nation for a while i let people push you behind it happened you are not given opportunities opportunities which were coming to you somebody else took it but you waited so today some specific questions am i called for ministry or business both should i be part of this church or organization yes for some more time should i be a leader in this nation you will be you will be a spokesperson what is your ministry your ministry is among parliamentarians prepare yourself how do i prepare myself study by word you are a daniel i will give you a spirit of excellence it will grow it will draw people to you i will never put you to shame your life is going in circles you want to break out you tried but people knocked you back relationships it's very difficult people speak some of them are accusing it hurts 
stay. I'm your healer. You don't want to run after men. You don't want to run after money. I will protect you. I will heal you. I will heal the relationship. You will have a better job, but that's not the end. Your end will be running with business people and ministry. You will travel to China. You will travel to Malaysia, Singapore. What you say is impossible. I'm going to do it. A healing in the relationship. I'm doing it. You came here wanting to hear the word of God. But today you're challenged. You're sitting in a place holding on to something. And you've been doing that for many years. Let go of that. That is not your provider. I called you as a prophet for nations. I called you as an intercessor for Israel. I called you as an intercessor for this nation. People put you in a box, in a small bottle, and you got lost. They purposely did it. Jealousy. I'm calling you back out of your hideout. Start writing, start publishing, start speaking. This nation needs you. Prophesying. Would you have a heart for wounded mothers? That will be your healing place. Lord, a vessel of honor. A vessel of honor. Let nobody touch her, Lord. So much of hurts. Look at me. It's an honor to serve you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. A Gibson. Where's Gibson? Gibson? You're trying to make big changes in your family. You're praying, you're crying. I will visit your family. I've already started working two months back. I will make changes. I don't know who this young woman is, daughter. I will touch her life. You're worrying too much about her. But I will hear your prayers. I will draw her close to you, close to me. I will give her life. Out of brokenness, I'm doing something beautiful. But you're saying, what can I do? You have a lot of ideas. It's not about money. You don't want to put your hand out to your family. I'm bringing something to you. I see this man, I don't know whether he's your husband. I will make you bless him. I will make you bless him. Your life will change. I give you a part of the world. You're an intercessor. I call you to this nation. Your children are like olive trees, even some grandchildren. But you're saying, Lord, what is my destiny? You like to preach, you like to share the word, you like to go to place. There are three things I'm strengthening your bones, I'm touching your eyesight. You have a heart for your people. You have a heart for India. I will send you there, South Africa, and I will send you to Israel. But you will have a property. It will be given to you. It will be a miracle. I am going to bless you. Before you came to this nation, you were doing something totally different. The opportunities are different here. You are an Elijah. I am going to fill your life with miracles. I'm bringing your family here. I will honor you. I will make you stand. You're a man full of faith. You don't believe in uncertainties. I will open the windows of heaven. I'll give you a better job. You will begin to preach and teach. You will plant churches in this nation. Stand up. This is your time. This is your time. I'm making changes in your life. You will work with him for some time. 
a joint thing, but that's not going to be a major thing. You will have a product, something related to women's. I don't know why I say this, something as a health thing. It will come from another country. You will not be running after that, but you will also move to U.S. and do something there, something related in U.S. I'm opening the doors. So don't run after things. I have pulled you out of what you were doing. Wait, I'm visiting you again. I'm going to bless you. You have a lot of knowledge. You're asking this question, how do I put it into practice? You will have your own company here. You will have your own ministry. And you will work with young entrepreneurs, not rich businessmen, young entrepreneurs. You will train them to become entrepreneurial, how to make their finances grow. I'm going to do it. Melanie, can I come? Anybody else needs prayers, please come forward. I'm healing your son. I'm healing his mind. You've been praying a financial miracle. People say it's not going to happen. I'm going to bring finances from an unknown source. You gave away everything. You lost a lot of things. But I'm going to do it for you. Don't worry. I will fight for you. People wanted destruction in your life. But I'm going to bring blessings into your life. I will honor you publicly. 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 Sister, look at me. Keep your faith. You're awesome. God bless you. You know, Anna, it's such a joy to see people like this. You've encouraged me so much. You're standing here for your whole family. Some of them know me, some of them don't know me, says the Lord. You want them to know. But it's a difficult path. It's not easy. A lot of tears. Rejection hurts. But you say, I want to learn from the word. I want God to honor my children. They are doing their own thing. God will touch their lives. You think you've lost a lot of things. No, God will give me it, bring it back. This year, two things. A huge restructure in the family. And whatever belongs to you will come back, even people. God is going to bring them to you. You're a person who never gives up. You did not want to come here, but something told you to come. You're holding on to the promises of God. You don't have anything. People have stolen everything from you, literally robbed. But I'm going to give back strength, healing, restoration. You're living not for yourself. You're living for others. They broke your heart. They were greedy. They took everything. You let go. But I will honor you. You've never asked God for money. Even today you told God, if I ask you money, will you give me? You don't have much. I'm going to give it to you. What people took away, I'm going to give. It will be a blessing to many people. You want to bless your children, it will happen. I will do it. You're, you want big changes in your life. You've been pushed to a corner. You had everything. You were riding high. You trusted certain people. Some of them were good. Some of them plotted against you. But now you've moved out. You don't know what to do. What you think was happening is not happening. A lot of delays. Don't give up on that. I will make it happen. Today, you're coming as a man totally broken. You never expected that God would call you and talk to you. You always thought it's a religion. I love you. I love your family. I will not let anybody destroy it. Stand. I will give it to you, says the Lord. Amen.
Lord, I stand with this family. Both of you have a lot of ideas. Everything started well. You prayed, some people prophesied. It's a very unique business. But now it's as if there are walls around it. In your own opinion, you need more money to make it grow. Lord, I'm a God of miracles. I will make it grow without money. Don't take any partner. Don't take any partner. There are people who say, let's work together. No. But stretch out. I'm going to give you unusual favor. The doors which were shut are going to open. They will come back to you. And I'm going to give you two new products without any investment. One will come from this country. You're always saying, we know only to do this. No. You'll be doing something totally different. But don't put food, money in the food. Don't put money in the food. There are people who will say, come, let's start that. No, not on Makan. Something else. God's going to honor you. Amen. Thank you. Come here, Nick. Did I pray for you, sir? Come. Nick. You're studying the word. You're spending time with God. For personal growth. You always say, I want to know God. In the last four months, the hunger has increased. But still, certain questions, how do I know that I'm doing this in the right way? You don't, you like to worship, but you worship in your own way. You're not fascinated by music. You're not fascinated by performance. In fact, you've been put off by many people's wrong teachings. Four things God wants me to say. You're a man of honor. You will never stoop for small things. I'm going to enlarge your business. I'm already leading you to a person. I'm going to connect you with this person. He's not in the city. There are two more cities which will open. There will be partners enlargement. The third thing, you want to do something in your own country, you will start a business there. That will make you travel. I'm also opening America for you. A large American firm will partner with you. I will fill your house with provisions and a relationship. You started, it didn't go well. Don't stop it. I will do something. I'm doing it. Amen. You started in a very simple, humble way. You're passionate about serving God. You don't care about money. But I'm going to bless you with a marriage. I'm going to bless you with finances. And I'm going to bring people who will work for you, with you. You're saying, I don't want to get in too much into legal things. No need. I will give you a facilitator, a platform. But everything will change. Prepare yourself for changes. The way you work, the people with whom you work, even some products, I'm changing it. I'm going to bless you. Amen. <coughs> Kent. Can I do something for you, sir? You've been waiting, yes. Kent, every day you're asking God for specific guidance. Not because you're afraid. You're saying, I don't want any miscarriages. I don't want any abortive things. Because you initiated many things and then they got aborted. Even not only for yourself, even for others. And you don't believe that you should run after money. You have a particular group in mind. It's a people group. We are in the commercial world and you want to create a message for them. Your company will design something. It will be a slogan, a statement, a mandate. Suddenly, investors will come. They will invest. Suddenly, there will be an identity. You don't want to do the same thing again. You want something totally different. It's not a product. It's a concept. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to honor you. So, the teaching was better tonight? Was it okay? The, the faith exercise was okay. 
I should take time to teach that, Anna. Melanie, some of you feel your season is changing. From a dry season, I'm bringing it to a plenty season. You literally hid. You hid yourself. You hid your talents. According to you, you said, I need to learn to submit. I need to study the word. I need to grow in the Lord. That season is changing. I'm going to take you out. You will begin to speak. You will run conferences. Your ministry is changing. You always wanted to have your own business, to design some fancy clothes. Children, I'm bringing it to you. You will go to nations which you've never visited. I'm taking you to nations. It's not a distant dream. But you will work with something to do with babies, children, accessories. It will be creative. It will become a franchise. An unusual thing. But because I love you, I'm going to bless you. There are many people who don't even know your value. They treat you as something, as a commodity. But everything will change. They will look up to you. They will honor you. Everything you do. I know this girl for a long time. Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't have...